All right, what is going on people? Today we're talking about Goldman Sachs and why they are struggling. So if you're interested in hearing about why they're struggling, we're gonna talk about the investment banking division, sales and trading, and why these areas are struggling to generate revenue. And we're gonna talk about the areas that they're focusing a bit more on in order to kind of cover the losses or make up for the downward trend of the revenues in these two big divisions. So if that's of interest to you, stick around. With that, let's get straight into the video. All right, so this year has been pretty tough for Goldman Sachs. And the reason for that, there's many reasons for that, but here's a few. A lot of senior employees at the firm, senior partners at the top end, they got their bonuses early in the year, January typically, and then they left. Last year, so in 2022, investment banking revenues across the board, across Wall Street fell about 50%. Goldman's bread and butter is investment banking, obviously, and so that had a big impact on their business. This past quarter, Q2 2023, for the first time in five years, Goldman's lost its number one spot in M&A, mergers and acquisitions, deal making to JP Morgan. That's the first time in five years. And last but not least, Marcus, the consumer arm of Goldman Sachs. So you know how JP Morgan has Chase. It serves the general public. It's a retail business. Uh, it's a consumer business. Goldman tried to do that with Marcus. It just hasn't reached its full potential. And so the future for that business isn't looking too bright. All right, so those are some of the big issues that are surrounding Goldman's right now, but you're probably wondering why is all of this happening? So let's dive a bit deeper into that. All right, so we need to step back. When you think of a global investment bank, you've got global investment banks and you've got boutique investment banks. Boutique investment banks just focus on one area like investment banking, M&A, IPOs, etc. Global investment banks like JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, etc. they have lots of different divisions, right? They've got the investment banking division. They do mergers and acquisitions, IPOs. They help raise capital for companies, whether it's through the equity markets or the debt markets. Then you've got the global markets business or the sales and trading business. There is the trading floor. You know, there are salespeople, traders. They're creating markets to help buyers and sellers meet and sell or buy financial securities. So that's the trading floor. Then you've got the asset management business, which is investing large sums of money for pension funds, corporates, other investment banks, uh, governments, sovereign wealth funds, etc. Investing money over the long term for large clients. And then you've got private wealth management. Similar thing to asset management, but you're investing money for high net worth individuals, rich people, basically. Lots of different divisions. So these are all front office revenue generating. Behind these divisions, you've got operations, HR, technology, etc. These functions help the front office do their job. For a global investment bank, when you hear people make huge bonuses of the front office divisions that I've mentioned, investment banking and sales and trading, that's where most of the money is made. If you want to get worked like a dog, you would go to those divisions. If you want to work so long and then get big bonuses for the most part, you would go into those divisions. Asset management, private banking, they pay well as well. All of them have great base salaries, but the bonuses in IBD and sales and trading are always going to be bigger. Now, I'm going, I'm giving some context in case it's useful for anyone watching. Apologies if you know all this already. Context is important. The investment banking division and the sales and trading division, when markets are great, when times are good, these businesses make a shitload of money. They make so much money. However, in recent times, obviously interest rates are going up, inflation is going up. The markets aren't as uh, booming as they used to be. There's a downward trend in the market cycle right now. As a result, deal flow tends to dry up. And so the investment banking division of Goldman's isn't working on as many deals as it might do in a different market cycle. Similarly, if markets aren't as volatile, then the sales and trading business is going to struggle to find opportunities in the market to offer opportunities to clients and make money, make a fee or a commission from the trades or the market making that it does. And so naturally, when the market is going up, Goldman is going to hire lots of people. It's going to pay huge bonuses. That's why 2020, 2021, you saw analyst bonuses reach new levels, base salaries reach new levels. Now it's a different story. When the market goes down and these businesses, the sales and trading and the investment banking aren't doing as well, they start firing tons of people. So right now you've seen in January 2023, Goldman's has been firing lots of employees. And so that's the case. Brief interruption to mention our video sponsor, Proton Mail. Are you worried about email hacks and phishing attacks? You can protect your investment and professional emails with Proton Mail. Proton Mail's advanced phishing protection, smart spam detection, and domain authentication warnings help defend against fake emails that trick you to reveal sensitive information. Keep your emails safe and secure and get the peace of mind that you need to focus on what matters most. You can start with Proton for free or you can upgrade to a paid plan for even more advanced features using the first link in the video description below. With that, let's get back to the video. 
All right, so you're probably wondering if uh, the sales and trading and the investment banking division revenues are very cyclical, they're impacted by market cycles, why do investment banks focus on them so heavily or invest in them so heavily? And it's because they make a ton of money when markets are good. So for example, in 2021, the good market that recently passed us by, Goldman's made about $15 billion in investment banking fees. That's a ridiculous amount of money. Keep in mind, they're the number one player in M&A deal making, but to make $15 billion in 2021 from investment banking fees, that's a lot of money. And so they can afford to ride that wave. And then when the market goes down, they'll fire people. When it goes up, they'll hire people, pay big bonuses. All right, so this is why global investment banks are interesting. They've got lots of different divisions, right? So when these two are struggling, they've got the other areas generating revenue. So the other areas at Goldman's, it's the consumer and investment management division or the investment management division, CIMD or IMD. That consists of the Marcus, so the consumer business, but we'll forget about that because that's more retail focused. If we're focusing on, you know, high finance, private wealth management or private banking, then you've got asset management, right? Asset management also has an alternatives business in there. That's a different video. Like there was another division called the merchant banking division. They did private equity, private credit, real estate investing, infrastructure investing, tiny division of Goldman's. The employees there were making more than anyone at the firm, likely, and they've merged into asset management, but that's a video for next time. But for now, we're going to focus on IMD, so investment management division, asset management, private wealth. These areas are less cyclical than the global markets business and the investment banking business. And so there's a lot more focus on the asset management and private banking businesses. Reason for that is because they aren't as cyclical because they take a longer term view. They invest over a very long period of time. Investment banking, you're working on a deal. It might be three months, six months, a year, two years. After that, it's on to the next one, on to the next one. And so if deal making dries up in the market, you've got no business. Whereas in asset management, there will always be a pension fund, insurance company, corporates, investment banks, sovereign wealth funds, governments, etc., with tons of cash and money that they need allocating into the financial markets to invest over 5, 10, 15, 20 years in order to either maintain that level of capital so it doesn't get eroded by inflation or grow that capital over 5, 10, 15, 20 years to pay insurance payouts or pension fund retirees, basically. Um, where was I going with this point? So, uh, so yeah, the fees in asset management and private banking are constant. So you get a fee for managing that money. So there's always gonna be money that needs to be managed and you just get a fee from managing that. Sometimes you can get a performance fee if you know a fund or a portfolio does really well, you can take a percentage of that performance, that's a bonus. But for the most part, you get a fee just for managing the money. Whereas in sales and trading, you get a commission based on how many trades you're doing or how much market making you're doing. And in investment banking, how many deals you work on. So it's commissions versus fees. And the fees are less cyclical. They're not impacted by market cycles. They tend to be quite steady, constant, and they just grow over time, slow and steady. Why is that important? Why is that attractive? Because end of the day, Goldman Sachs and all investment banks are publicly traded companies, right? Most of the bulge bracket investment banks are publicly traded companies. What does this mean? It means they've got a share price and who owns them? Really and truly, it's the public that invests in their shares. So shareholders, you've probably heard, you know, the most important person that a company wants to please is its shareholders. And shareholders don't wanna buy into Goldman Sachs stock if they just think it's always gonna be up and down, up and down because of market cycles that impact the sales and trading business and that impact the investment banking division. So Goldman is gonna focus more on the asset management and private banking or the wealth management division or the investment management business because it's steady. It gives shareholders certainty and confidence that their share price of Goldman stock isn't gonna continually fluctuate given fluctuations in the stock market. It's gonna steadily grow over time. And that's what shareholders want. They don't want a stock that goes up and down every other day. They don't want to be constantly uh, hit by market downturns. And so they want revenues that are not so cyclical, but are steady and constant over the long time. And that's what the investment management division or business offers. So worth considering if you're applying, like internship applications are open now for Goldman's anyway, a lot of the other banks will open soon. If you are considering the investment banking division or the sales and trading division or the asset management or private banking, Everything in this video is worth considering, might be worth talking about in interviews. It's just good general knowledge, especially if you're applying to go
involvement, which I'm sure many of you will be. Also, I've done tons of guides. You can check them out. Second link in the video description below and sign up to the newsletter, a weekly newsletter that I send out covering everything that you need to know that's happened over the week. So check that out. It's free. All right, last thing before we wrap up conscious, I don't want to keep you too long because of the cyclical nature of IBD and global markets or sales and trading. It is a safer route for graduates to go down private banking or asset management. Why? Because there's less turnover, less people get fired compared to the other businesses. Obviously, play to your strengths, see what you're interested in, see what you're good at, and then just try and explore different areas, read up on different topics and find what fits or works for you. Try different things, but it's worth keeping that in mind. If you want a safer high finance career, asset management, private banking, if you want a bit more risk or if you're really keen on markets, if you're really keen on deal making, all of that kind of stuff, global market sales and trading or IBD. But yeah, with that, thanks for making it to the end and I will see you in the next video. Peace.